Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roblox, and you all know my co-hosts, two very, very special guests, Justin, adulting sucks bird, and Uncle, okay, COVID-19 isn't fake news, Ken. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, our first stop for all the parts and gear we need for our Harleys. Today is the Roadblock Rant episode with a little bit of news sprinkled in. So, we are here in the studio. Well, Ken and I are. Justin is uh, social distancing himself from us. I don't Quar- want to be in the same room as you dirty motherfuckers. Quarantined. Yeah, he is, he is quarantined. I know you fuckers don't don't wash your hands, so. My hands are dry as fuck right now because I've been washing them too damn much. I know, right? That shows that you don't do it regularly. Mine are fine. It depends on what you wash them with. It's just another day for me. I went from using my Bath and Body Works to having to use Dawn dish soap because I did a lot of cooking yesterday. Oh, isn't Dawn supposed to make your skin, like, super soft? No, it just removes all the fucking oil off of everything. That's why they use yeah. it on oil spill animal <laughs> cleanup. <laughs> yeah. So, you, speaking of get lowered, though, they yeah. sent me a sticker pack in the mail today. Yeah, I saw their your post on yeah. the old gram. Yeah, a little, little post, a little handwritten postcard. Yeah, and some stickers. I was like, I, like I haven't bought anything from them in a couple months. Yeah, it's two, three months. Well, so that's pretty fucking awesome. They sent me a machete for Christmas. You're lying. I swear. A machete. They, they sent me a machete, yeah. Well, how, how come we're just hearing about this? I don't know. I thought I told you guys, but apparently it, it slipped past most of our conversations. I mean, that's... Yeah, cool. like last year they sent me a, a Gerber pocket knife. That was their... Not last year, the year before last. And that's the one I kept in the bar bag at the diner. And then this year they sent me a machete. Okay. Last year they sent me the uh, those drag specialties uh, bar stools that are oh, in the yeah. garage. Yeah. Yeah. And then this year they sent me a machete. I mean, those those all kind of fit, you know, pocket knife, you know, shop stools, bar stools. But a fucking machete, <laughs> that's kind of fucking dope. <laughs> Which is so funny because as the last time I was doing yard work, I told my wife, Alicia, I'm like, I need a machete. She's like, you don't need a machete. You You're not buying a machete. I remember that. <laughs> and then they got me a machete. <laughs> that's funny. And I used it, and that's why my, my my nasal passages are all blocked up, because I was chopping down uh, dandelion that had grown, like, up to five feet tall in, like, two and a half hours. <laughs> and uh, when I hit one, one of them fell over and smacked me right in the face as I was breathing in, <laughs> so I got all the little, like, cottony stuff in my nose and my throat. Have you Have you seen the prank videos? Yeah, it was just like that. <laughs> Except so, it was mostly nose. <laughs> So there's prank video. For those who don't know, there are prank videos out that you can go watch, <clears throat> and someone will hold the dandelion that, that's you know got that's seated, and you know you blow on it, make a wish, and they'll hold it for a friend, and as soon as their friend opens their mouth to take a deep breath, you shove the dandelion in there, <laughs> <laughs> and it's excellent. Oh, I want to do it so bad. I want to find <laughs> someone gullible enough to do it. That's great. I mean, you know someone who's gullible enough. Uh, she's on the internet too much. <laughs> he probably shared the video with her. He probably did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. So, what is season two's roadblock rant episode? Now, I've I've been I've been cooking these up for a while, and these these rants are the ones that. For me, and this is as Johnny Roblox, nothing else. I these bother me the most. Okay, yeah. So little pet peeves. Yeah, just just shit I'm seeing on social media or on the forums or anything like that. So, rant number one: equality amongst bikers. No, I am not talking about gender or race. Though those are important topics for discussion. No. No, they're not. I am instead talking about (laughs) why people feel one brand, one type, or one style of motorcycle is supreme. So, before I 
get onto my fucking soapbox. I'm going to let you guys tell me what your thoughts are and what you're seeing out there in social media right now, or just what you've seen in real life. Uh, Ken, let's start with you. Well, so, of course, everyone always talks about sport bikes versus cruisers, and then you get into the metric versus American. But see, for me, this is all about preconceived notions. Mm -hmm. Generally, the way you were raised, you know, my dad was always a Chevy guy. You know, Ford stands for found on road dead, fucked on race day, et cetera, et cetera. You, you think of it, and and he, it was one of his things. He, he, just, he just hated Fords. Mm. And there's no reason for it. I mean, all these products, for the most part, if they've been around for 100 years, they're probably a quality product. Now, each brand is going to have its own little, you know, little thing that kind of maybe sets it off mm -hmm. a little bit better. Or maybe in one brand does, you know, engines just a little bit better. You know, and they're talking, oh, well, I had my, my Chevy for 150,000 miles and all I ever did was change the oil. Well, well, good for you. There's, there's guys with Fords that do the same thing and Toyotas that have a million miles on them. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it all comes down to, you know, preconceived notions like how you're raised, you know, each thing has its own specific use. Yeah. You know, Every, at the end of the day, these are all tools. Yeah. You know, for content creators, they're tools to create content and to drive a following. Yeah. But... It's people are so fucking die hard. Oh, it's even in the Harley families. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, it's performance baggers. The only thing out there, everything else is garbage or sportsters. Those are only made for chicks. That's all bullshit. Yeah. A sportster has a specific niche. Yep. The soft tails, the same, just like the touring bikes. And I would think today, you know, 2020 by now we would all realize it's all the same shit oh yeah just different different paint yeah so i have seen arguments and fights break out oh i've seen actual physical fights break out over what one thing is better than the other thing and i don't know let, let's before again let before i go off justin let's hear your side of this I mean, I really don't have much to say outside of what Ken already said. It's it's the, the Ford versus Chevy, you know, Coke versus Pepsi, Apple versus Android. People are going to have their favorites. But, I mean, 98% of whatever you're talking about is the same. Uh, for example, you know, Snap-on versus Craftsman. It's going to get the job done regardless. One might, you know, do X, Y, Z better. The other one might do A, B, C better. But at the end of the day... It's it's pretty much the same stuff with different crap thrown on it. Yeah. Yep. I just, for me, I'd rather people get away from their fucking keyboard and just go out and ride. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, none of these people are ever serious when they talk about this in person. No. But you get them behind a computer screen and they are freaking just elite warriors. I'm sure you I'm, guys have seen the pictures going around where it's like, it, it's got like really buff, like rip motherfuckers on keyboards. And it's like, hey guys, new to the group, just started writing. Thanks oh, for having me. And then like, yes. it's like, you know, a scrawny little dude. Oh, fucking fag. You know? Yes. <laughs> it's like yes. That's, that meme's accurate as shit. 100%. <laughs> yes. Right. And I'm curious if, if, if the squeaky wheel is what's getting the grease here. Because I know we, I, I would assume that we're all in agreement that online, you know, the hate is what gets all the attention. I mean, you even see it in the news. You know, uh, Kylie Jenner's new shirt causes global outrage. Did oh. it? Did it? Did it really? Yeah. Did it cause global outrage? Who, who did it outrage? And it outraged it, a few exactly. people. Exactly. It outraged exactly. a few people. Exactly. And and they managed to hit the right timing for that to catch someone's attention. Exactly. And I'm curious if that's what's happening, even talking online or in person. I mean, like I've maybe met like one, maybe two people that are, you know, die hard of, oh, Harley's the best bike out there. And they actually think that like they're they're dead set oh, on it. They would go to the grave. They're true believers. That. 
Yeah. yeah. One, maybe two. All the rest, I would think, fall into that, you know, oh, my daddy drove a Ford, I drive a Ford type of deal. But, you know, they're still going to ride with a Honda or a Kawasaki or whatever. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I, I would own a Honda. I mean, if, if I, I, I fit, if I fit better, yeah, I mean, yeah. If I fit better on like a Goldwing, like if the leg room wasn't an issue for me on the Goldwings, I'd, I'd, I'd buy one. I wouldn't because I don't like dudes. <laughs> see what you did there. I see what you did there. They thank don't you, scare thank me. You. Thank you. They don't scare me. <laughs> like, he's like he's not two and a half feet across from me right now. Yeah, so exactly. He's, I'm, he's I'm able behind to talk keyboard right now. Shit, <laughs> I can't cough on him at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm I'm just I'm so tired of that's what I see. Oh, it's it's all about the Dinas or it's all about the Sportsters or it's all about this or all about that. Fuck you. Just go out and fucking ride. Yeah. Get a group of buddies, stay six to 12 feet away from each other, socially <laughs> distance, and just ride. <laughs> Damn it. I, ugh. Well, then take a little bit of your own medicine and put down the screen and go ride. Well, as soon as I'm done recording, well, no, not as soon as I'm done recording this, but tomorrow, if it's nice, I'm going to go ride. No, I've, I'm definitely going to be playing Call of Duty, so. Yeah, tonight, <laughs> tonight's Call of Duty. Night. No, and tomorrow. And tomorrow. Oh. And probably the next day. Oh That's man, you 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 have no sort of adjustment period for this whole quarantine thing, do you? Yeah, I do. My wife is home more. My daughter uh, is home more. You yeah, know how fucking okay. stressful that is. Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, trust me, I I do so much. So what's nice about this for me is I don't have to travel. Oh well, fuck you! You took that job. Well, no, no, I, I I'm I. Choose your rate, choose your fate. That's what we always said in the Navy. But I don't have to travel. And you're still getting paid. I'm still getting paid. I'm still working. But I'm it's we're seeing a paradigm shift from a lot of our clients that are saying, you know, last year, oh, you need to be on site every day. Y- yeah. So <laughs> now they're seeing all this work that can be done. And here's the thing: if I if I fly to San Francisco and spend four months out there working, it doesn't cost my company any additional money. It it costs the client money because that's yeah. a pass through expense. Oh right? yeah, I mean they got to pay for your flight. They got to you know hotel, pay for hotel food. You know, all travel. those in mean, mind that companies accept that that expense. Yeah, I just I'm I'm. I am cautiously hoping that <laughs> companies will start seeing that, okay, we don't need to fly these experts from all uh, all across the country to come in and do work when we could all do it over Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Skype or whatever. Well, yeah, I mean, you don't, well, like you, you're always gone. You, you'll leave. Sometimes you leave Sunday evening, most of the time Monday. Yeah. And you come back Thursday, sometimes Friday morning. All right. And you're there all week when you can do the same job here. Now, I get there are some things you need to be in person for, yeah. but you don't need to be there all week long. Exactly. You know, maybe once a week, maybe once every two weeks. Hey, if, if, it, was, if it was one of those things where the bottom line actually mattered, they wouldn't have <laughs> this type of expense for us flying and yeah. staying in hotels like San Francisco. I can fl- they're pretty much giving you the flight for free to fly out there's like 300 bucks round trip flight yeah the hotel room is 380 or something like that per night that's ridiculous so i i look at it from that perspective why why do all this nonsense now i know we're getting way off topic so i'll i'll pull this back around because i actually I, i can segue into this you can now very, very rent- smooth pointing it out like that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Perfect segue. Yeah, definitely. And I fucked it all up. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes, you did. <laughs> but you can now rent BMW motorcycles here in the United States if you're visiting Los Angeles or Las Vegas. Hertz Rental has brought Hertz Ride to the U.S. following a stint of success in Europe. And I tell you, I'm not upset. 
Uh, they start about $150 a day, going all the way up to $227 a day. So this is on, pretty much on par with what we saw with Eagle Rider, as well as what we saw with Indian. So kind of cool. Uh, but they have a <coughs> bunch of different models, R9, uh, Scrambler, the F700 GS, the 1200 GS, the K1600 Bagger, as well as their big boy bagger as well the one that ha- the pretty much the 1600 that has the uh, torque pack on it um so you know it's it's pretty cool check it check it out hertzride.com if you're going to be traveling out to those two locations so la or vegas only yeah that fucking sucks well they have to roll it out in not nah, stupid they should just do it <laughs> right here in san antonio oh yeah yeah i, there's, I know there's a huge <laughs> bmw rental community here they're just itching to do it yeah. Honestly, I mean, if there was a spot to do a BMW rental, It'd be here. San Antonio would be a pretty hot market. But you know they're going to do it in Austin first. Oh, for sure. And they'll be yeah. like, oh, you can still go ride the Hill Country. Yeah, technically, they're they're right. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to rent a, a 1200 GS for the day. I think that would be amazing. Okay. Rant number two. And I put this one in the middle because this is my biggest pet peeve. Talking shit about less skilled riders. Why are we, as humans, so quick to belittle a rider for their skill level? Why talk shit when you can teach someone to be a better rider? You know, the whole TSA thing, if you see something, say something. Yeah. Don't be a dick about it. Just give them constructive criticism. You know, for us, you know, the three of us, the three of us are road captains it's our job to maneuver groups of riders around an area. So we see everything. Our heads are on swivels and we pay more attention typically than most of the people riding with us. Well, yeah, most of the people that are riding with us are just riding. Yeah. So I, where does all this shit come from? Why do we feel that it's better to to just rag on someone. Oh, well, you know, then, I mean, you see it in my response. That's exactly why. Yeah. But let's go to Justin first. We started with you on the first one. Let's start with Justin this time. So I think it's coming from, from one of two places. I feel like it's either A, coming from a place of insecurity, mm-hmm. as in, you know, th- most people, I would say probably 90% of riders are new enough to riding that they can remember when they started. I mean, it's not something that that you forget. I think there's very rare instances where someone, you know, learned to ride at a a pre-memory constructing age to where they can't uh, put themselves in their shoes. Uh, So when they do get just a little bit of skill under their belt, I think it's, it's easy for them to I don't know, try to compare themselves to someone who is just starting out due to the insecurities. Kind of like, you know, if you start going to the gym and, you know, you're you're benching 250, you look over and you see a guy with, you know, similar size benching 180, you're automatically thinking, oh man, I, I can bench more than him. But it could be, you know, yeah. he's been doing it for seven years and that's just what he's doing. But I think it's either coming from a spot of insecurity or we might be talking about something kind of similar to our our first rant in that not a lot of people are actually doing it, but it's just the squeaky wheel getting the grease. And um, I I personally have never met anyone that is, uh, you know, dead set on talking shit about other people's riding capabilities, unless those riding capabilities are endangering other people. And I feel like at that point, you're opening yourself up to it. You're you're an open target at that point, if well, you're doing it on purpose. There you go. That that's it right there. Yeah, yeah. If you're if you're out there dicking around, riding dangerously or poorly, then and you know you are, then that's your own damn fault. But that's that's something different. Yeah, here. that's that's I'm I'm strictly talking yeah. about like when we do group rides, you know, we hear people saying, Oh, this guy in front of me just fucking sucks. He can't maintain speed, he can't do this, he can't do that. But I'm looking at that rider because when I hear that type of stuff, okay, I need I need to keep an eye on this and see what's actually going on. 
homeboy's riding his ride. I can't I can't fault him for that. He's doing everything. He's passing signals. He's he's maintaining a comfort level between him and the bike that's in front of him. But nothing else. It's just he may not be as comfortable taking the twisties as fast or as hard as Justin's taking them. So he backs off. That's not necessarily a skill level, though. That's a comfort level That's a at comfort, that point. Yeah. But I think as people get more skill, their comfort level goes up. Therefore, well, they're willing to push themselves a little bit harder. Yeah. No, I mean, a good example of this is Hasso. Mm -hmm. When he started riding with us, I noticed the way that he was taking corners, he wasn't, you know... He wasn't shifting his, he wasn't holding his body properly. He wasn't shifting his weight right. He was sitting incorrectly. Mm -hmm. So at one of the stops, was like, when you're doing this, you need to do this. And since he has done that, I mean, you know, whether it was me prompting that or if he saw it somewhere else or maybe just enough people prompted that, mm -hmm. he's since fixed it. And he feels, and he has said that, you know, even, you know, riding with us, and learning what we do, he has become a better writer. Yeah, and and folks like Hasso, he has no problems asking. No, not at all. I think that's a big part of it. I mean, if someone ever asked me for help to become a better writer, I'm never going to belittle them for that. No. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all out here trying to enjoy a sport. So if someone feels confident enough to come out and then asking a question of the people who are allegedly more experienced writers. Well, I mean, even if you just perceive them as a better writer. You know, right, right. But I'm saying, you know, when you hear the, the, the job title of road captain, you're thinking, okay, they have tons of experience. They've done this for a while. They know what the fuck's going on. Whereas... You have people who just get up and start running their fucking mouth and turning a camera on. Everyone thinks they're this awesome rider because they can do a wheelie. Yeah. And then you actually watch them ride in real life. You're like, okay, this fool is a wheelie guy. That's all he is. He's not a twisties guy. He's not a go fast around corners, anything like that. Oh, yeah. He's a straight line, and his bike looks really cool. Oh, yeah. It's just like here in, in, in town. You know, the guys that run from Dave and Buster's to North Star. It's a straight line. Yeah, They're, that's that's literally all they ride. That's all they <laughs> ride. That is their thing. I'm going to, you know, we'll, we're going to run from Dave and Buster's to, to North Star. You know, see. Who For those there. of you who are not local, that's like, what, five miles? Maybe, yeah. If that. And But it's a straight line. Just, you know, on, yeah. what's on the highway? I mean, you know. But, yeah, you get these guys that. You know, like you said, they slap on a camera and, you know, they go right around and they can, sure, they can do a wheelie. Anybody can do a wheelie if they practice. I mean, I could fucking do a wheelie on my bagger if I practiced and was willing to potentially wreck it. I just, I just won't, you know. But then you have guys out there like, you know, I don't condone what the guy does. Mm -hmm. And from what I understand, he's a bit of a dick. But uh, Max Wrist. Who? Max Wrist on YouTube. Look him up. Okay. He's a hell of a fucking writer. Incredibly talented. A amazing writer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just phenomenal. He's kind of a dick. Okay. You know, but he's out there on on super sport bikes. And from, I don't know if this is true, but allegedly he's in the army. He's over in Europe and all mm -hmm. that. And he can fucking flat down just put it out there and fucking go. Mm -hmm. And hit the twisties and... Do, and, of course, do, doing wheelies at 100-plus miles an hour and all this shit. But he can fucking ride. You know, and he's out there hitting the corners. So, I mean, and he's doing it at top speeds. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, he knows how to ride. You know, he may not be able to teach you shit, but he has learned how to ride. Are you, and this is to both of y'all, are y'all believers or adopters of the if you are an expert, you can teach it. No. Okay. No, absolutely um, not. I would say, no, I'm going to have to agree. I, I feel like you can be a teacher of it, even if you're not an expert. So I believe the complete opposite. Okay. I'm not saying that if you are an expert, you can't teach it, but just because you are an expert doesn't mean that you can teach it. 
For example, I am pretty knowledgeable within Microsoft Excel. I would not call myself an expert, but I know a whole lot more than the average person. But anytime I get asked how to do something, I will Google a link to a website that teaches you how to do it and send that link to other people and explain, look, this is going to explain it a lot better than I can. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, oh, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. That's what's so amazing about opinions. <laughs> <laughs> we all have them. They all fucking stink. No, it's... I mean, we brought up Hasso. He was a great, great example. The whole thing about this, and I thought maybe this was more of an age thing where you see younger writers who think they're Billy Badass and they're out there talking shit, but it spans... Oh, the entire writing there's no, culture. There's no age, no age discrimination in this thing. No, it it's it's equal from the 16 year old who has been on a bike for like a month but thinks he's a you know a street Rossi, and then you have you know the old timers who've been riding for 60 years. See, and plus. I have and I have more of a problem with the people who have been riding for a long time. You know, when they're the ones out there talking shit and not helping. Yeah, I agree. So, so and that comes to you know my thing then let's hear from you what is what is your thing so with all this to me i see it as a as a way to feel superior i know something you don't know all right now they may help they may not but to me it's always felt that way whenever i'm in this situation whether it's with riding a motorcycle or working on you know motorcycle or or barbecuing Mm -hmm. you know it's like, oh, you don't know that? You know that kind of, oh, you don't you don't know that? Well, I know that. Dude, How anytime can... someone says, uh, oh, you don't know that, I just want to punch them in the mouth. Exactly. It's, it's you know, every, everyone wants to feel superior, even even for just a moment. Mm-hmm. They want to feel superior. I mean, it feels good. You can't even lie. You know, no, it no, feels good not. to know more than somebody else. But then you'll feel even better if you can actually fucking help them. That's that's always been my thing. You know, the few times people ask me for help, I feel better about the fact that I'm capable of helping. Oh, well, I mean, you know, you feel good because, well, obviously they think you know. You know, and two, if, and if you do know, well, hey, I can teach them. I can help them. Yeah. And those that don't use that to help, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> well, you know, I am so glad you have heeded our advice about sugarcoating your opinion. You know, it's, it is nice. Um, yeah, I'm doing what I can. <laughs> <laughs> I think me and Ken are trying to say very similar yeah. ideals, just in two completely different lenses. Oh yeah. I mean, there's absolutely the insecurity thing could 100% and, and the superiority thing, and it could be both. I mean, it could it, it, it be a blend of both as to why people act like that. I think I think you're absolutely right because if someone is humble enough to be able to teach someone, I think they're also humble enough to to know that there are better writers than them. Of course, you know, taking professionals completely out of the uh, the equation. I'll even take motorcycle cops out of the equation since they do get paid to do that. Like some people are so high up on their high horse, they think they're one of the best writers on the street that's not getting paid oh yeah they think like they're that's untouchable. exactly and i think that if you're humble enough to be able to teach you're definitely humble enough to realize that there are better writers out there than you and i f- i feel like at least with us three if we were around some guys that were better writers than us in our particular writing styles and our bikes that we would want to soak up as much knowledge as we possibly could. And I know that's a fact because Roblox has told me about all of his teachers when he started writing and how he just wanted to, to learn everything he could from them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, crashing sucks. It really fucking does. Does it? Yeah. Yep. Did it again today. (laughs) What? Wait, what? It was on the dirt, but oh, um, yeah. yeah. So, still counts. My whole thing is, I if I'm trying to learn something, like trying to learn how to ride dirt bikes, everything Justin was saying, I was trying to soak it up because he's more experienced than I am. Oh yeah, 
So when he's saying, hey, just let the bike float. Who the fuck are... What? Yeah. Let it float? <laughs> who the fuck does that? And then I, I, I was like, okay, he's more expert at this than I am? Let me try this out. And okay, it, it made sense. Now, okay, cool. But Crazy Ed Edwards up in Plano, Texas... He puts on a bike practice. I've talked about him a number of times on the show. He doesn't even listen to the show because he's, you know, a dick. Oh, damn. I love the guy. <laughs> Fuck you, Ed. I always will love the guy. But I will say that he is my number one teacher because he took all the bullshit you learn in MSF and he applied it to the street. Well, yeah, because the MSF is a parking lot course. Exactly. Yeah. But I, I recall a time where... Crazy Ed, myself, and actually Tracy's ex-husband were all out riding, and Ed knew our the skill level of the other two riders with him. So he pulls us over on the side of a highway. Now it's a you know a state highway, not like an interstate. And he was like, "Hey, I want you guys to practice. If you ever have to ditch the road and go into a ditch, I want you to know what that feels like." here in a controlled environment so you won't be scared oh yeah i mean we did the same shit in the military yeah so he he applied what he knew to help us grow and once you know after a couple of months of riding and during his bike practice that he puts on every wednesday night he's like hey roblox i need you to go and start working with this new rider teach them how to you know navigate the course, how to become a better rider. And I felt really good that he saw that I was at the level where I could start teaching. Yeah. And I see it as paying it forward. Because if I can have someone who is riding with me become a better rider, that's less likely for me to get into a, you know, an accident with them. Well, yeah, you yeah. very well could save their life. You'll never know it. No. But, yeah. So, I don't know. I'm just... I'm... Just, I, I, maybe it's just the millennial in me coming out. But all the fucking hate just kills me. I'm... For something like this. This right here. If 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 you rolled up and it's your, your a new rider and someone starts giving you grief... What is going to be your opinion of the sport of motorcycling? Oh, yeah. I mean, even though you shouldn't judge every biker by the one encounter, but let's let's be realistic here. Oh, well, I mean, that's how Perception everything. is reality. Yeah, perception is 80% reality. So, I don't know. I just, I hate seeing people get frustrated and get told off because they're trying to learn something and... People are just being assholes. And most of the people talking shit can't ride for shit. Oh, no. <laughs> nope. So, all right. Enough of that one. A little bit of news. Going to some happy moments here. But <laughs> I will forewarn everyone, there's a small roadblock rant inside of this. <laughs> New ECE helmet standards is coming soon to Europe. ECE 22.06 will be the first major update to the safety standard in over 20 years. This update will include testing changes to better gauge the effects of accidents on the helmets, as well as testing the updates and technology that have happened over the last two decades. So what does this mean for us here in the United States? Not a damn thing because the U.S. DOT is a complete joke. All kidding aside, when you are shopping for helmets, look for the ECE or the Snell rating. Yep. Now here's the small rant. The reason the DOT doesn't want to change their safety standards is because it will force the DOD, the Department of Defense, by the way, to acknowledge the effects of traumatic brain injuries, the ways in which they can come about, and finally, the VA would have to start actually helping veterans. That is why the DOT won't take this seriously. 
Okay, there's no evidence stating any of what I just talked about. That's just my opinion. And I'm a bit salty over the VA's lack of actual care for veterans. And in the time of COVID-19, conspiracy theories are great. <laughs> yeah, but that one was that one was rough, bud. That's that's a yoga stretch right there. <laughs> hey. Sometimes that's all it takes. That's all it takes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that rant, I, I just... I'd, Maybe, off, I'd I, offer you a hug, but we were not supposed to. I was sitting yeah, in your lap earlier. Well, don't touch him. We weren't hugging. Touch my hand. <laughs> touched it. Yeah, I touched okay. it. Oh, Jesus. See, that's why I'm not there. Because okay, you, so you fuckers like to play with fire. Of all the updates well, you know. to the testing requirements, I like the fact that the Euro Standards Board has accepted that helmets must protect people at both high speeds as well as low speeds. Current testing does not look at the safety of a helmet during a low speed collision. This change as well as the angle of impact testing should make our helmets even safer and actually provide us with a fighting chance when that mommy murder van runs a stop sign because her <laughs> eyeliner really had to be fixed at that exact moment. I mean, it's true. Yeah. So what do you think? I mean, did I actually put that in there? I, that was supposed to just be the news, but what do you think about this update? Well, I mean, for me, it, and like I, like I wrote in the show notes, it fucking blows my mind that helmets essentially have gone unchanged for decades and decades. I mean, they add little bits here and there and, you know, oh, now they've got moisture wicking and, you know, the styrofoam they put in there is, it's a little bit better styrofoam than we had 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. You know. And that's the only reason it's better is because it's cheaper to produce now. But I mean, <laughs> you know, they, yeah. they, they went from, you know, plastic and, and or from fiberglass and plastic to, you know, injection molding and carbon fiber. But, you know, the the dot standard is so freaking simple and so basic and voluntary well yeah you self-certify for dot yeah i mean you know justin and i talked about this several years ago on on one of his videos mm. about how when they dot test a helmet there they put a weight inside of it and they drop it from six feet and if it survives their criteria mm -hmm. their loose criteria then it passes. Well, they put like an impact sticker. Yeah, in they there. got impact stickers. Yeah, as on long it. as the sticker doesn't blast out, then yeah. you're fine. Essentially, yeah. So they only they drop test them with with a weight from six feet onto a hard surface, and because you know their theory is is well, when you're sitting on a motorcycle, your helmet, you know, from helmet to ground could be, you know, up, upwards of six feet depending on your motorcycle, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But you're falling down, and you're just hitting the ground. But it's terminal velocity. So that's, that's the only thing that matters here. So <laughs> you know, yeah. if you, if, if, dick, if you fall I'm over at 100 miles, terminal velocity in that short of a time. I mean, so their their argument is whether you're going one mile an hour or 100 miles an hour, your helmet's only falling six feet to the ground. Now, which when is it, why I don't buy DOT helmets. When when your helmet hits that ground at 100 <laughs> miles an hour, it's going to be whipped around. Mm -hmm. But hey, we don't have to test for that. Well, plus, how often do you land on the crown of your helmet when you are get you know? Let's say you get hit from the side. You generally don't land on the top of your helmet. No. So it's on the sides. Well, all around the sides, it, your it's face, everywhere sides. except for the crown of your helmet. Yeah. So with these, with the new standards, they're actually putting in requirements around side impact and as well as the liners inside, like the, uh, was it MIPS? Is yeah. Yes. What's the new belt? thing is MIPS, yeah. So they're testing that as well, and they're bringing that criteria in. They're also testing the internal sun visors. Makes sense. Those are not always safe. Well, most, mo well, like you, you're not going to find hardly any. There's like maybe one brand out there that has a modular helmet that is 
ECE that is ECE rated, and I can't think of the brand right now. It's either Showy or Shoeberth. It's one of those. I want to say Shoeberth. That rings a bell. Yeah. Hmm. Because I believe mine is. We'll have to, we'll have to double check yeah, it, but I look. believe. And and here's the thing. Or maybe it was Snell. It's got to be Snell. Yeah. yeah. Like one Snell. S- yeah, because Snell is pretty much the the gold standard for racing. I think I think ours are easy. Well, there's different levels of Snell as well. Right. Right. Yeah. But I um, think it's a Schubert that has the the Snell rating, and it's a and it's a modular or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look. If only I had a way to look it up. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I'm just, for me, I don't trust DOT because it's the U.S. government at the end of the day. So I don't trust them coming up with a standard that actually makes sense. I mean, I like the fact that this is happening, and I like the fact that companies who are selling helmets in Europe have to go through their ECE certification. And I don't mind paying extra money because of that certification. You know, people always bitch and complain, oh, the DOT helmet and this helmet's the exact same, but this helmet's, you know, $400 less than this ECE. Who the fuck cares about Europe? Well, the Europeans <laughs> care about the Europeans, and they want to make sure that their helmets will actually protect their riders. And it's like, they have to charge more money for their products because they have to provide evidence that their helmets are going to perform in a manner that will meet that standard. I was like, DOT, you self-certify. I could go create a helmet and test it here in my house and I can send the results in and get a DOT sticker for it. Yeah. That is literally how easy it is. But the ECE, it is strict. Snell is even stricter. So here, so here's one. This was, so this article from Ride Apart, Ride Apart, yeah, was written last July. Okay. July 2019. And, you know, it says, and, well, and a quote from, from the article says, we have tested modular helmets and even certified a few of them in the past. Uh, w- one of them that lasted was the LS2 FF394 Epic Modular Helmet. And how much is that helmet? Uh, th- and so <laughs> it, li- so that was made back in 2013. So it's probably not even around anymore. They've, ah, they've moved on, uh, and it doesn't 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 give me a price. Uh, so and then so the article goes on to say. However, as much as we like the convenience of modular ge- headgear, this is Snell talking, mm-hmm. we're not willing to give up any protective performance to get it. See? I'm okay with that statement. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're not willing to risk someone's life because they think something's cool? Come on. I mean... Only and, America does that. And, and, you know, modular helmets are a convenience. Oh, yeah. 100% that yeah. I must now have. <laughs> right, <laughs> I can't live without it now. So yeah, so that so yeah, that's that was from that's an article from Right Apart, where they d- actually did interview uh, someone from Snell. Cool, cool. All right, Justin, anything to so, add onto this topic? Absolutely. The I kind of have to to piggyback off of your saying it. At the end of the day, it is a government standard, and the government's just going to do enough to. Sp- hopefully keep you alive like if you look at like the fda guidelines for stuff that we eat i mean oh that's it's, crazy it's it's insane right like you can have like x number of i don't know how they uh, parts per million of like aluminum or you know this or toxic metal do you or, know how many uh insect parts are allowed to be in a hershey's candy bar it's stupid like seven yeah <laughs> it's ridiculous so i think a lot of your safety at the end of the day comes down to you. Yes, you're gonna have to pay more for it, but that's why the you know all organic uh, Kobe beef is more expensive than a steak that you buy at you know Culebra Meat Market. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, I mean, the, it's just the government is just there to set the lowest bar. 
Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, That's like, why you, 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 military grade terrifies anybody who's been in the military. Facts. <laughs> facts. But I can I can attest to uh, the Snell. I mean, I feel like they are so cut and dry about you know being they, they stand behind their standards. Yeah. Their standards exist for a reason, and we're not going to make sacrifices just to make it you know cheaper to produce or look cooler or be more convenient or even you know be cooler for the rider as in like you know temperature wise like no the <laughs> granted you can try to make them as comfortable as as you want that's that's on you guys, but you still have to meet these ratings yeah and uh, while we were in the uh, Simpson uh, factory, we got to actually go back and see where they test their health helmets for the snail rating and it is insane the stuff that they have to do to pass those ratings and it made me really happy that i had one of those helmets around my head and i mean even for dirt bikes i have a snell approved um, bell with the mips the 650 dollar helmet yep but even in three races i've taken two or three good licks that might not have gone as well as they did in a cheaper less protective helmet yeah yeah all right our final rant of the episode i almost promise (laughs) <laughs> and I'm aiming this one at us. Putting stock into what content creators say. At the end of the day, all of us content creators are entertainers. Yes, there is an artistic piece to what creators are doing. But at the end of the day, we're the equivalent of strippers. We provide a short-term reality escape from the everyday grind. <laughs> Now, as the biggest content creator in our crew here, Justin, I'll start with you. Uh, I have to agree with you. I mean, at, I, I personally, as a creator, I try to make it very well known that most of the time I just barely know a little bit more than whatever topic I'm talking about. Like, if it's you know, wrapping a bike. I know a little bit more just because I've done it a couple times, but I'm by by no means an expert. I can answer a couple questions here and there, but at the end of the day, you still need to do your research. You still need to go out and do what I did and look at the internet and listen to real experts. I think the only part where this kind of has to uh, have an asterisk on it is when the content creators are experts in the field. For example, I know people have opinions on, okay, yeah, John Maxwell's a great, a great example. He is, I wouldn't say he's an expert, but he's far more trained and far more qualified than the average person. But he's also humble enough to, to admit when he doesn't know something or if he's not an expert on something. But another content creator I want to talk about is Dan Dan the Fireman. It's right there in his name. He used to be an EMT. He knows what to do during crashes. He knows, uh, you know, uh, how certain injuries can occur over others and kind of teach you about that. Once again, not an expert, but he's far more knowledgeable than the everyday. So I guess when it comes to putting stock into what content creators say is know the background, just like anything else. Like when you go and read a news article, you don't want to be reading it from Joe Schmo down on, on third street. You want to know exactly someone that just saw it passing by. No, you want to talk to the the lead expert in the field that is, you know, scientifically uh, literate and has the, the background and the knowledge and the accolades to back it up. So none of Trump's advisors. Gotcha. (laughs) I I don't know enough to even, even comment. So see, that's me saying that I am not an expert. (laughs) I don't fuck with politics. I don't know hardly anything about it. So there you go. Ken? Uh, well, you know, if anybody wants to send me $2 bills. $2 daddy. You can, uh, you can go ahead and Is that tying back to the stripper joke? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to clear that up. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> I, I agree with Justin, but, you know, when it comes down to it, even if I see Justin do something and it works, I go and look and see, is there a better way mm-hmm. or is that the best way? Right. You know, but that's just who I am. Mm-hmm. I'm like, let's be honest. Let's be honest. 
if I would have just gotten one Cardo for myself, it would have taken a little bit of convincing to get you guys to buy Cardos. Correct. Probably, yeah. That's a perfect example. So, I mean, you know, if you're if you're out there and you're just taking people's word for it without doing any of your own research, you're your own worst enemy at that point. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you know, I'm not an expert. I can hunt and I can fish and I can shoot guns and I can work on cars, but I'm not an expert. I'm a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. Sure. You know, yep. I've learned a lot about a little, and, you know, as the apocalypse continues, I'll be a survivor. So, yeah, there you go. For me, on this one, um, I guess all three of us are in, in line. Um, you, you have the guys out there like John Maxwell who are producing content. They are entertaining us. But they're giving out information to help. Now, if someone watches our YouTube channel or they're wa- or they're listening to our podcast and they've heard you guys say, "Oh, well, Roblox changed his handlebars twenty times," he must be knowledgeable. <laughs> that doesn't mean shit. It means no. that I was too cheap to take my handlebars to the dealership and spend four thousand or a thousand dollars to get the the bars put on but you learned but i learned how to do it by watching youtube and then figuring shit out and you've had times where i've had to take it to a dealership and have them unfuck it you had the dealership show up with a trailer so (laughs) yeah and roblox you know that there's youtube videos on how to mow your own lawn right and I oh, have okay. I zero sure. yeah. enjoyment of mowing a yard. I Yeah, you look like you were really enjoying that time that it took you four hours to train, change the bars on Tracy's bike. <laughs> that looked like a lot of fun. No, that and sucked. And then had to pay the dealership to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> that sucked. But I learned something from it. I'm, I'm sitting here talking shit just because it, I have to jiggle my ignition bars to get my bike to turn on. You so. still haven't got that fixed? <laughs> No, dude, I, dude, I've been so fucking busy these past couple days with work that, like, when I'm done with work, I, I literally just sit and do nothing just because my brain's fried. Yeah. Goddamn COVID-19. Even though my garage is now air-conditioned and I put extra lights in there and it smells amazing. And, yeah, I still don't want to spend any time in there. That's why he doesn't invite us over there. I know, right? He doesn't want to smell like us. Well, and, and people hate me on this channel. <laughs> No, no, that has nothing to do with it. <laughs> it it's literally so- because a 30-minute job turns into a four-hour ordeal because we just sit there and conditioning. fuck around. No, we get it. <laughs> All right. I got a pretty All large right. surface area. I use a lot of air conditioning. Let's move to the closing argument. <laughs> our, our, one of our best friends, just he's going to talk to us over the internet, but not in person, not have us help him or watch him build a bike. Oh, and, I mean, bolt-on parts. Yeah. Hey, there you go. I was wondering where you were going to get a shot in. <laughs> hey, look. Not a rant, I promise. <laughs> I feel at this point, all of the shit that's been done by you to your bikes, you're building them because you're tearing them apart and then rebuilding Tomato, tomato, man. I know. It's People are assholes. <laughs> definitions. It's, it's literally arguing over definitions of words. Yeah. I would totally call it the bike and bird bullshit on series, but it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't have that ring. But the bagger bolt on series does. But see, he didn't have a bagger at the time. No, no. I, no, no I'm saying, but th- our video. Oh, yeah. 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 That one makes more sense. Now, if only you had a thumbnail that wasn't terrible. It might get some views. That's not my department, so I have nothing to do with that. Does anyone else think, now now that people are are listening, uh, does anyone else think that Roblox is just going through his iPhone emojis and just picking one for his next (laughs) thumbnail? Are you just going down the line? No, I'm actually Google searching emojis to kind of go along with the title of these. Oh, Oh, okay. That's much better. better. (laughs) But I I would have rather heard that you were just literally going down the line. In I your heard phone. Gingo, that's better. <laughs> no, no. So, so we're on today. We're on emo- emoji number seven today. It's a crying emoji. 
That's how he's going to start writing the show notes. He's going to look at his what emojis he hasn't used. It's like, okay, I got the uh, the confused emoji. Um, what <laughs> what confuses you most about motorcycles? Actually, the confused emoji was going to be the one I used for this one. But oh, god so you, you damn it! Some, you get some stock photos. God, unrelated stock photos. Yeah, like standing by the ocean. <laughs> Well, we, I could we, just go back to using words. I'm just, just, I think the, the thumbnail needs to be someone standing by the ocean, holding a ear of corn. There you go. Make that happen. Standing by the ocean, holding corn. I could probably make that happen. It won't be to the quality that Justin photoshops. But oh, oh, stop, stop. I'll, I'll make something. There. Okay, closing argument. <laughs> Should we ride? during the whole social distancing the world is going through justin uh i i am extremely torn on this and i've already kind of violated it because i did go ride today and i also went and rode last weekend but it was riding dirt bikes the reason i say that i'm torn is because yes it is an activity that you can go out and uh, based off of our shelter in place is it a law or whatever you want to call it uh recommendations you can go out and ride and not break any of those those requirements we can you know keep the social distancing all that kind of stuff the the moral issue i have with riding during this whole ordeal is that if you were to go down we are we all know it's not a matter of if, but when. Motorcycles go down every single day. If you go down and you end up in the hospital, you are taking away a doctor. You are taking away a nurse. You are taking away uh, someone doing paperwork or x-rays or what have you from those who probably needed a whole lot more than you do and didn't choose to do the activity that they were doing to end up there. Now, that usually stands true throughout the entire year no matter what the circumstance is but at times like these it's it's, it's kind of a little bit more uh, uh i don't know morally focused to try to stay out of the hospital as much as possible eh. <laughs> nah. i saw i saw i don't know who started it i saw it on a, a moto vlogging page i'm on but they they were promoting the uh, I don't know if they called it something about hang it up, like operation hang it up or something like that. And he was basically like taking a pledge to, to not go ride until, you know, your hospitals are not being stressed. Now, how stressed hospitals are, I think the only people that can tell us that are the people that are actually in there working it. I think everyone's getting a lot of, uh, hype and false news and maybe, maybe it's all true news and we're really that fucked, but if we are in any sort of issue, uh, I'd like to kind of do my part and try it. Like I said, no one ever wants to go to the hospital. I never plan on going out and riding and be like, ah, maybe take a trip to the hospital today. No one ever wants to do that. But in times like these, I think it'd be best for everyone to kind of take a couple extra steps, make that small sacrifice, and at least limit the amount of time that you could potentially end up in the hospital like if you ride every single weekend maybe take a weekend off if you ride 200 miles maybe only ride 100 well so are we talking about you know going for a ride like if i wanted to go cruise the sisters are we talking about just riding every day in general i would say more towards the recreation like if you're using it for transport that's one thing i mean if you have other modes of transportation that are safer it you'd be taking kind of two extra steps i suppose I but you're say because statistically speaking if i go ride the sisters i'm less likely to get in an accident than i am riding to heb yeah. yeah if you're what statistically speaking five miles from home or well, from work i mean that, that's kind of a flawed thing that's so super <laughs> flawed statistic but, but, you mean because you know everything you do typically and even most of the time work within five miles of your home well, that's how most people do it yeah yeah so that, that's why that i fucking hate hearing that uh what are your thoughts kid i have no problem with it look you know in the big scheme of things nothing has fucking changed for i mean for me 
like even if even if I did have a job and I went to work, you know, typically the job that I've always done, I've always really been an essential person, you know, security. Everyone always needs security. So I mean, you know, even you know when I was a bouncer, the bar closed. Well, oh fucking well. I mean, I didn't really care anyways. Mm-hmm. But I mean, nothing changes. You know, I didn't go out to eat and sit at restaurants except for when I went with you guys. Really, yeah. If we want food, we usually get it to go or have it delivered. I don't go to bars. I don't hang out at the mall. So, I mean, going for a ride was no different now than it was then for me. You know? Uh, I mean, fucking, you don't even have to fucking talk to anybody. You can go for a ride. You don't have to worry about contaminating anyone because you just use your freaking card at the pumps unless you're a fucking barbarian. Who uses cash and has to go inside twice? But right, yeah. <laughs> so actually, probably three times, really. You know. But ah, uh, I mean, I get. You know, yes, there there is a chance that you could wreck. Well, I mean, I could fucking get in a car crash driving to the grocery store. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm more likely to fall down the fucking stairs at my house because my dogs knock me over than I am to get in a wreck on my motorcycle. And and that that happens quite regularly with my damn dogs. Well, they are herding dogs. Yes, they're just doing so, their mean, job. You know, you're more like <laughs> you're more likely to get hurt in your house. That that's a known fact. Uh, you know, I get it. You know, don't go outside unless you have to. But I'm not touching anyone. I'm not talking to anyone. I'm not doing anything with anyone but myself. You know, I'm not going to church. I'm not going to park to sit around. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> a little side note onto this. Because of all of the social distancing and the various towns that are shutting down in Texas, you know, I was just up in Dallas uh, visiting my dad. And I didn't even notice we went through Austin both directions. <laughs> like, there was no traffic. Well, I mean, well, like, I came, I came over here. What did y'all do? Monday? Was that Monday that I came over? Whatever. Yeah, Tuesday or Wednesday. No, it was Wednesday. Yeah, anyways, you know, it was, granted, it was 9 o'clock at night. But, but no one was out there. But fucking no one was on the road. And on the way home, on the way home, I stayed in the right lane the entire fucking way, <laughs> did 80 the whole fucking way, and only had to pass two people <laughs> in the 30-minute drive that it takes to get here. And then when it's 1 a.m. and I'm leaving your house, you know, on a normal, you know, non-coronavirus day or, you know, whatever night, there's 400 people on on 1604. Yeah. For no fucking reason. Yeah. Well, they're going from one bar to another probably. Well, yeah. (laughs) But uh, for me on this one, I don't really fucking care. I I don't. Look, I, I understand the social distancing. I have no issues with that. On my bike, social distancing doesn't mean shit. But I also see just inside of this where... Yes, I do. Yes, in the unlikely event that uh, I go down and I need to go to a hospital, yeah, I will be taking away a doctor that would be treating another person who probably got COVID and did nothing to get it. I mean, they did something to get it. Okay. It's their Anyways. Damn, it's their own damn fault. They decided to go to the fucking grocery store and get all that goddamn toilet paper. That's how they got it. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's that's kind of where I'm at on this. I'm, I'm not going to change my riding habit. Um, I do think that the only... The, the issue I see is most of our rides when we are going a good distance has a restaurant. Oh yeah. Has a has tied to it. Has a couple stops. Yeah. You know, so I would just say for anyone who is going out and enjoying their additional free time, because that's what this, this whole lockdown thing is really providing is extra free time. Mm-hmm. People who want to go out and enjoy it. Great. Go out and enjoy it. Just be mindful that 
not all the gas stations are going to be open. Not all the restaurants are going to be open. You're not going to probably, in almost every town, you're not going to be able to go sit down at the restaurant. Well, yeah, and I'm sure, like, you know, the, the stop in Leaky, the motorcycle stop's probably closed. I mean, they do have a restaurant there, and they might be offering to-go orders, but I, I doubt it. I would say in those areas, they probably didn't even hear about the whole coronavirus yet. <laughs> I mean, that's that's kind of my thought on this. Um, no, they, they definitely have. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just shocked at how, because my parents live out in that area, and I was actually shocked how how serious my dad was taking it. Well, he is old. He is, but he he also thinks that, you know, every other scientific publish is just the way that the Democrats are pushing their their narrative. Yeah, but Trump said that this is a thing. <sighs> that is true. I did Hold well, no, cuz I was talking to him before. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm actually putting thought into this. No, because when I talked to him, Trump was still on the whole, it's not that big of a deal thing. So I think he was actually going against his boy on this one. I mean, the only, the only thing, the only reason this is a big deal is because we don't have a vaccine for it. And yeah. we, we won't have one for years. Eh, there's no magic pill that doctors can give us. Hey, to. allegedly Texas already has a vaccine. It'll be ready by June. That That's not possible. I'm just saying. I read it in the news. The Daily Beast. <laughs> Reddit is not news. Yes, it is. <laughs> and if you've got coronavirus, don't take ibuprofen. It'll kill you. I have heard more uh, credible articles about that one. Mm. So, but no. You can take pretty much everything but ibuprofen. Yeah. Just So go on your ride. Don't take any Motrin with you. Yeah. Just Only take Tylenol. Advil and Tylenol. And stop licking stuff. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels Podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. I, I, I be dead, dude. I like, I like that.